All right. Let's get the jitters out. Get the jitters out. Get the jitters out. I always like this part. It's funny. Da, da, da. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Meet me in the trail, it's going down. Meet me in the mall, it's going down. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ox, encouraging you to try new things. Today, I wanted to talk about oral health. I wanted to shoot today because yesterday I actually got my hair done, as you can see. I've got these nice long braids. They're really, really dope. My friend Ashley did it for me. Uh, shout out to you, Ashley. You really killed this style. And then I had to do the lineup a little bit. I know it looks a little crazy now. Let me brush it. Do this real quick. There you go. A lot better. Before we get into the video, I wanted to talk about being a black male hygienist. I normally don't like talking about race um, at all, but I feel like this topic of conversation is very important to me and I wanted to address it. When I used to work in New Jersey and I was employed by a few different doctors as well as temping in different offices around the state, I always felt this kind of uncomfortable feeling whenever I would present myself in front of patients or simply just walking into the dental office. Since the dental hygiene field is predominantly white women, I feel like the patients would expect a white woman to come in and clean their teeth. But whenever I would come in, I feel like there would be a little change or, you know, a, a change in the vibe of the appointment, as well as, you know, a lack of trust or credibility within myself from the perspective of the patients. Maybe these assumptions were true, maybe they weren't. Maybe I was just automatically assuming that this would happen. Maybe I was not giving myself the benefit of the doubt, but that's just something that my gut feeling told me. I always felt like I had to be a lot more professional. I feel like I had to try that much harder to get patients to trust me to clean their teeth. And now I'm very fortunate enough and blessed enough to work at a clinic where the uh, color of my skin or the presentation of my hair does not define who I am. So this message goes out to all the hygienists or the student hygienists that may look like me or may feel like the same way I do when I walk into clinics or offices. Just believe in your craft and always treat all of your patients with the utmost respect, even if they are rude or come off as rude or disrespectful and let your work and your craft and your skills talk for you. So yeah, that's all. Now let's get started with this video. Bow. The main four things that I do to keep my mouth nice and clean and my gums nice and healthy and cavity free and no problems at the dentist whenever I go. I floss, I brush my teeth, I use a tongue scraper, and I use mouthwash. So those are the four basic things that I want everybody to do. I want all my patients to do it to keep their mouths in good shape. So let's talk about why we floss. Plaque and bacteria grow in your mouth constantly throughout the day and food that you eat throughout the day attracts the bacteria to it and what happens is they consume that food they leave acids behind and that causes cavities now that plaque also sits right underneath your gums there's a little tiny space in between your tooth and gums and plaque sits right in that little tiny space and irritates your gums and that's how you get gingivitis or inflammation of the gums or the first stage of gum disease. Removing plaque from your teeth reduces the chances of you getting gum disease as well as cavities. The toothbrush can't really clean in between so that's where flossing comes into play. Sometimes when you floss you'll see some broccoli or some chicken or some lo mein or whatever you ate throughout the day fly out of in between your teeth and sometimes you won't even feel it and so that's why it's so important to floss every day to get rid of all that stuff that you may feel or you may not feel but if you 
you leave all that food and plaque all over your teeth, then the bacteria in your mouth are gonna have a nice big old party and cause a whole bunch of cavities on your teeth and a whole bunch of inflammation on your gums. So make sure you floss. It's very important. We don't just say floss for no reason. So make sure you floss and make your hygienist really, really proud of you. Now, there's two type of flosses. There's the little floss picks and there's the string floss, the traditional string floss that you can use as well. Either one of them is fine. Overall, the string floss is a lot more efficient in removing plaque in between your teeth, but the floss picks are a lot easier to use and I'll explain why in a second. So with the string floss, you wanna start off with grabbing an arm's length of floss. Then what you wanna do is grab the floss with your dominant hand. So if you're righty, then use your right hand and wrap the majority of the floss around your middle finger. Then wrap the floss around your middle finger on your left hand a couple times. Now when you pull on the floss, it's not going anywhere. Now you're gonna use your index fingers and your thumbs to control the floss. Then what you want to do is take the floss and kind of wiggle it in between a set of two teeth. So it's kind of like a, like a seesaw kind of motion, kind of going back and forth. And that helps the floss get into in between the teeth. You don't want to push the floss down until it snaps in, because if you do, then there's a big chance that you'll push down too hard and hit your gums and cause some pain and some bleeding. So that's why I recommend kind of gliding the floss in between your teeth so that you don't accidentally push down and hurt your gums that way. Now, once you're in between a set of two teeth, you wanna make sure you kind of wrap the floss around the side of the tooth. You can see how the floss is kind of hugging the tooth and the floss kind of looks like the letter C. That's what you want to aim for. And then once the floss is hugging around the side of the tooth, that's when you scratch the side of the tooth with the floss up and down against the side. And you got to make sure that you do that for both sides. So every time you go in between a set of two teeth, there's two sides for you to clean. So you have to make sure you scratch both sides when you floss in between two teeth. Now, when you're done with flossing in between a set of two teeth and you want a clean piece of floss, you're going to take the floss and wrap it around the middle finger with less floss around it and unwrap the floss around the middle finger that has more floss around it. And so now you have a clean piece of floss to use in between the next set of two teeth. Now the same thing applies with the little floss picks. You're still gonna get in between a set of two teeth and you're gonna make sure that you still scratch the two sides of the teeth with the floss using that C-shaped flossing method. Now you can see the floss pick doesn't wrap around the tooth just like the regular string floss does because there's not much floss to work with on the floss picks. Having more floss to work with is good so that you can wrap around the whole side of the bigger teeth like your molars in the back. So that's why I believe string floss is better than the floss picks. But as long as you're flossing with something, then I'm happy. When you have food or bacteria on the floss pick, you want to make sure you're rinsing it off with some water before you floss the next set of two teeth. So that's basically how you floss. You just repeat the same thing, the same C-shaped method in between all of your teeth. Get rid of all the plaque and the food and bacteria that's sitting in between your teeth. Loosen everything up in between your teeth before you start brushing. Now, before I show you a toothbrushing technique, I gotta let you know that I don't use regular toothbrushes anymore. And I haven't used one since the first day I got my new electric toothbrush, which was around 2016. And I highly suggest that everybody starts to use an electric toothbrush. And I'll tell you why in a second. Now I use my electric toothbrush here, the Philips Sonicare toothbrush and this Crest Pro Health gum and sensitivity toothpaste to brush my teeth every night and every morning. Now I always get questions on which toothpaste is best. And I would say it honestly depends on what kind of conditions you have going on in your mouth. So let's say you have a lot of tartar on your teeth, then I would suggest you use a tartar toothpaste. 
If you have bleeding gums, then I would suggest a toothpaste that would help with the bleeding gums. If you have a lot of cavities or you get a lot of cavities very easily, I would suggest a toothpaste that has a little bit more fluoride in it to help with fighting cavities. Now, I'll speak for myself and I'll say that I have not tried every single toothpaste that there is on the market. So I can't really say which toothpaste is better than the other. I can only recommend a toothpaste that I've heard about or a toothpaste that I personally use. So if you're somebody that goes to the grocery store or the supermarket and goes to the oral health aisle and always looks confused as to which toothpaste to buy, just try one and then stick with it until the next time you go to the dentist and see if the hygienist or the dentist sees any improvement or no improvement in your oral health. If there is improvement, great, stick with that toothpaste that you've used. But if there isn't, then switch it up and try it again and see if there's any improvement afterwards. So this is a fake mouth that we got from dental hygiene school. I just wanted to show you guys exactly where we clean your teeth when you come to the dentist. There's a little tiny space in between your tooth and gums called the sulcus. It's like a little pocket surrounding each and every one of your teeth. And that's where all of our tools and instruments go. And you can see here with my instrument that I have, it slides right in between that space, that sulcus, that pocket. So since that's where we clean, when we clean your teeth at the dentist, that's where I want you to clean with your toothbrush. And you kind of have to angle your toothbrush towards that little pocket. So once you angle your toothbrush bristles towards that little pocket, you're gonna go in small circles along the gum line. That way you're getting the plaque that's stuck inside of that pocket. At the same time, you're getting the smooth surfaces as well. I ultimately think this is the best way that you can brush your teeth, especially if you have an electric toothbrush. It's gonna clean so much better for you because the bristles are gonna be moving and vibrating for you so that you don't have to use that circular motion like you would with a regular toothbrush. I'm telling you guys, get an electric toothbrush. Now, make sure you wet the toothbrush before you apply the toothpaste and after you apply the toothpaste to the toothbrush. If you do it any other way, you're a psychopath. It's that simple. You have to do it this way because I said so and I'm a hygienist. So my word counts. Now, I just wanted to show you that throughout my two minutes of brushing, I'm always keeping my toothbrush bristles pointed towards my gums or that little space, that little pocket in between my tooth and gums. Try not to forget the biting surfaces of your teeth, you know, where you chew food on your back teeth. When I clean people's teeth, I usually find a lot of plaque and tartar buildup on the inside surfaces of the bottom back teeth. So make sure you're emphasizing pointing those toothbrush bristles towards the inside surfaces of the bottom back teeth to make sure those areas are nice and clean. Also, notice how I'm holding the toothbrush handle. I'm holding it very lightly with my fingertips. That helps me with avoiding putting too much pressure on my gums while the bristles are pointing down towards them. You don't want to apply too much pressure when you're brushing because that's going to cause your gums to recede and pull away from your teeth and then that'll lead to your teeth being more sensitive to hot and cold foods. Keep in mind that plaque is just very, very, very soft. And so you using a toothbrush, whether it's a manual toothbrush or an electric toothbrush with fingertips on the handle, it's gonna remove that plaque off of your teeth just fine. You don't have to vigorously scrub all of your teeth and your gums. And another thing, if your toothbrush bristles look like freaking eyelashes, you need to chill out and stop putting too much pressure when you're brushing your teeth. And some electric toothbrushes will tell you if you're putting too much pressure. The vibrations on it will weaken and slow down until you ease up on the pressure and then it'll go back to normal. 
This electric toothbrush has that feature. This toothbrush also has a timer built into it. And so after two minutes of using the toothbrush, it'll automatically turn off to let me know that I'm done brushing my teeth. I always tell my patients to start off with the cheap electric toothbrush just so that they can get used to it. And then if they wanna upgrade, then they can go ahead and do that. But I would hate to have somebody buy a $400 electric toothbrush and they don't even like using it. So I always tell people to start off with something cheap and then upgrade if they want to. Now, this is a tongue scraper. They come in many different shapes and sizes. This is the one I have. This is the one I got from Walmart. Tongue scrapers help remove the plaque and bacteria from off of your tongue. When people brush their tongues, all they're doing is just spreading the bacteria all over their tongue and they're not necessarily removing that bacteria off of their tongue. So when you brush your tongue, there's a good chance that your breath is still gonna smell like doo-doo. So you have to use a tongue scraper to remove that plaque and that bacteria that's causing bad breath off of your tongue. The bacteria and plaque on your tongue leave behind sulfur, and so that's where that bad breath comes from. So please, please, please go buy a tongue scraper and scrape that plaque and bacteria and food residue off of your tongue. Don't brush it, scrape it. So when you scrape your tongue, you're gonna go all the way to the back of your tongue as far as you can. Just try not to gag and scrape off all of that plaque and bacteria off of your tongue. Then you wanna repeat that a couple times against the whole tongue surface. And then just make sure you're rinsing off all that accumulated nasty plaque. Ew, look at that. Ugh. I bet you if you smell it, smell like doo-doo. And that's basically how you scrape your tongue. Mouthwash is the last step, and I like to use natural products when it comes to my oral health. So I stick with the Natural Dentist mouthwash. I like the taste of it. It's very minty and it leaves my mouth very fresh once I'm done using it. But again, this kind of goes back to the toothpaste recommendations. It'll be the same for mouthwash recommendations. Mouthwash is used to slow down the growth of the bacteria and the plaque in your mouth, as well as give your mouth a nice fresh smell. Now, the only thing I suggest that everybody use when it comes to their mouthwash is a mouthwash that doesn't have alcohol in it. Alcohol is going to dry your mouth up and increase the chances of you getting cavities. So you want to have a mouthwash that does not have alcohol in it. So what I normally do is put some mouthwash in a little cap. I'll put it in my mouth, swish with it for about 30, 45 seconds and spit it out. And after that, my mouth feels very, very nice and clean, nice and fresh and all that. And that's what I do every day, twice a day uh, to keep the cavities away, for real. like. Prevention is key, guys. Oral conditions usually creep up on somebody, so don't let it creep up on you. Uh, try your best to go see a dentist every six months, get a cleaning, and at least every year get a checkup, get some x-rays taken to see if there's any new cavities or anything like that, or any bone loss around your teeth. And prevent, prevent, prevent any oral diseases, gingivitis, which is inflammation of the gums, or tooth decay or caries or whatever you want to call it. Um, just prevent them. And doing these four steps can definitely reduce the chances of you getting any kind of you know oral condition. So floss, brush, tongue scrape, and mouthwash. Those four things. Just do it. Try new things. Try it out right now. If you're watching this and you didn't brush your teeth before you went to sleep and you're laying down watching this video, get up and go floss, go brush, go get a tongue scraper and use some mouthwash. For real, like do it, try it, try new things. And that is all for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the post notifications so you know when I post new videos, there's a lot more videos in the making, a lot of ideas I have in my handy dandy notebook. 
So stay tuned. Um, it's going to be a whole bunch of different new topics to talk about. Um, and I'm very excited to be sharing all this information that I have and all these ideas that I have with you. So thank you for watching and stay cool. Don't forget to try new things. Peace. Mm. Don't know how much time is left, prayer get my mind right I'm really not the one, touch the team and you go zeitgeist Always got the crew beside me just to watch my blind side You breeze, how I'm shredding through these beats, no incomplete Couple years, they're gonna be a cold track featuring me Couple years, they're gonna mention me, Mon the dopest and see